Hey guys, welcome back to the layout once again. Uh, today we have another video blog kind of deal um, on the layout. Uh, as you can see, I'm actually back at the layout, and I apologize that I didn't have one of these last week. Uh, I think in the first one I said I'd have one for sure. Um, but as I mentioned, I was uh, out and about. I was actually way out west um, on a nine day rail fanning trip, and there really wasn't a great opportunity for me to actually upload a video. So uh, just because of the hotel arrangements and Wi-Fi was kind of restricting and all that. So I wasn't able to get one in on Monday, um, but here I am two weeks later. Uh, just got back from the rail fan trip. So because of that, nothing's really happened on the layout. Um, but I guess I can just show you a couple things. Um, and really, uh, I guess what's what's coming up this week is uh, rail fanning videos for the most part. So um, we went, we flew out to LA and from there, we went out to the beach first. Um, no train related things there, but uh, from there we kind of went uh, through East LA to uh, San Bernardino, Colton first actually. Went to the Colton uh, flyover there, um, then San Bernardino, caught a couple trains there. Um, then we went up Cajon Pass uh, all the way to Barstow. Uh, stayed overnight in Barstow and then went out on the Needles subdivision, rail fan to Daggett all the way out to Ludlow. We didn't make it all the way to Needles, but uh, still got a good amount of rail fanning in there. Um, and then from there we kind of went west and north, we hit Tehachapi Loop, uh, and actually, kind of interestingly, uh, the first day we were there, the traffic was completely dead, so it was kind of disappointing. Um, luckily we reserved another day, but on that, uh, on that first day, that was, uh, kind of a historic moment, because, uh, they, UP crews actually removed the turnout on East Waylong siding. Um, so, I mean, that's the, that's the first time there hasn't been a turnout there in uh, over a century, I'm sure. So, uh, and many of you guys are probably aware of the Tashpi Loop double tracking project. So that was uh, under construction while we were there. Um, however, the second day traffic cleared up and we got plenty of trains, which was uh, a relief because uh, we were kind of worried we weren't going to get anything there. Um, but then we moved on, we hit Caliente uh, on our way out of Tashpi Loop or Tashpi Pass. Um, but I think the next day we went out to Yosemite. Um, again, no rail fanning there, but had to check it out because we were out there anyway. Uh, and then went out to, uh, after that we did uh, the Feather River Canyon, which was pretty dead that day, but got some good video anyway. And then the next day we did Donner Pass, and that was kind of our final night. So um, all in all, it was an awesome trip. We got a lot of action, um, and I'll be uploading those clips, as I said, hopefully this week. Um, last year I was really bad about getting those uploaded on... I'm actually still uploading videos from last year's trip. Um, but anyway, that's why um, there hasn't really been uh, much progress or videos to show uh, because I was gone. Um, but being back, uh, I'll start to work on those projects as I mentioned in the last video, such as the uh, lift out bridge, which is behind you guys. Um, and then, I guess that's really, uh, really it. Really quick though, I did do a little bit of uh, weathering. Um, at Oops, don't know what that was. But anyway, uh, you guys saw the uh, BNSF Jeevo that I weathered. Um, in addition to that, I've been weathering some of the coal cars here. Um, so I don't know if you can see this, if it's focusing. Um, but right now I have 18 cars. I need to get another six pack, so I have a, a full 24 car train. And uh, I've just been experimenting, did a little bit of uh, grime on the bottom of the car there, just kind of dirt colored. And then also wanted to get the coal dust in there as well. Um, just, I don't know, there's something, something nice about a coal car that has a nice airbrushed coal dust look to the top of it. Um, I also need to get coal loads for this once we get the grade on the upper level so I can test uh, power arrangements and uh, train length and all that, because that'll add to the weight of the train. Um, but that was just another thing that I've been working on uh, in addition to that Jeevo I weathered. And then also, really quickly, here is... Uh, this is the other unit that I weathered. Um, I'll make a video on this once I get a decoder in this, but this is this is the SD70 Mac that I'm keeping. This is 9580. Um, as I mentioned, I'm going to... I don't know. I mentioned this in some video. Uh, but clearly, I haven't patched this unit at, at all. Um, but this locomotive and many, or at least a few in the 9500 series, um, actually stayed relatively clean without BNSF patches for a while. So what I'm going to do, or what I have done, is weathered it. Um, again, just did some underbody grime, the brown... Um, and then some soot on the top, uh, just general light weathering all around. And then I'll come in with a patch over this BN logo here and put the BNSF in, as well as the uh, safety striping on the bottom. So anyway, like the way it turned out, just wanted to show that uh, to you guys really quickly. And honestly, that's all I've been, uh, all I've completed since the last video. Um, but 
as I've said like four times now, I'm back. Uh, I'll be working on those projects that I outlined in the last video, and hopefully I'll have uh, some videos to show for it. So anyway, guys, as always, uh, thanks for watching, and be sure to stay tuned for more videos.